And I felt maybe today I could deal, we could deal with a spiritual warfare, but I still feel there is more that we need to learn as far as intercession is concerned. Um, especially for this time that we are, we are, we have committed ourselves to pray is good to, to understand so that we can really be able to pray with understanding. And so that because the will of God is for us to be effective in, uh, in our intercessory. And um, as I pointed out yesterday that uh, intercession is, is, is standing between God's judgment and, and, and God's blessing. We need also to understand that intercession involves knowing and identifying with the spiritual status of a community or your family or whatever you are praying for and uh, uh, of, and identifying with the spiritual status of the community. Believers are called to have God's concern and respond through intercession to the needs of the society, nation, or, or whatever area you are praying for, you need to, 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 to be very, you need to identify, you need to know, you need to have, that's why we do spiritual, you cannot be very effective in intercession if you have not done what is called spiritual mapping. Spiritual mapping helps a great deal, we know uh, in the case of Nehemiah chapter 1 and number 17, you, maybe you can go and read for yourself. And Daniel 9 and uh, 4 and 5, what they did, they actually did a, a spiritual mapping, which helped him, which helped them to do an effective intercession. And you can see how effective it was because they were doing it from a point of knowledge and that's actually being able to to access what is the weight, the weight of the matter, the extent of the damage that has been done. And uh, we, uh, last time when we are tackling about uh, repentance, we saw that uh, re repentance opens our eyes so that we can be able to see what God has lost and also what the church has lost. And because we are the people that God is entrusting unto so that we can be able to stand on the gap and it is God's blessing, God's salvation, God's grace, deliverance. We need to know, we need to identify what is happening in the area. What are the spirits, what are the demonic forces that are luring in a particular area? What are the territorial, what are the territorial forces, the territorial spirits? And what could have, what could have opened a door for those uh, demonic forces uh, to have uh, uh, an upper hand because the, the, the devil operates through the doors that has been opened. Uh, and, and of course, people, they are the ones that are involved. Uh, and and let, let me say, let me, let me point out, um, and I know that you're going to understand what I'm saying, is that especially in areas where you find that is, there is a lot of, uh, there is homosexuality, there is racism being, those, that's, those kinds of scenes, they, they actually open doors and those that, um, that enforce territorial powers, it is like strengthening them. They, 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 they have an upper hand. Areas where abortion is on, on the rampant, you'll find that uh, even the, the kind of covering that happens, that takes place in that, uh, in, that, in that locality, in that territory, they are very, they are very intense. And so, so sometimes you find that even uh, getting breakthrough in prayers, getting getting breakthrough in warfare, sometimes it become very hard, and that's why before we we venture into intercession, we need to really identify, we really to know the spiritual status of that of that city, the spiritual status of your family, the status of you know whatever you are dealing with, whatever you want to intercede for, you need to be, you need to identify with the situation very well so that we actually you know you know you know the dimensions you know how you're going to set the standard yesterday we spoke about revelation you cannot intercede into the dimension that uh, maybe god will desire if you don't have a revelation of that particular situation or a particular setting we said yesterday that uh, revelation helps us to enforce dominion and so 
th this is the opening of an eye. You, you are able to see in the realms of the spirit. And when you see in the realms of the spirit, you are able to identify with, with that need, with what, what needs to be taken, with the actions that needs, need to be taken. Because sometimes the, the, the working of the devil, sometimes we see, we see the manifestation. But behind the scenes, there is what is actually networking. You know, when you see, when you see a good example, uh, the, the, the spirit of immorality operating in a, in, in a city, that, that, that is just like um, a child. There is the mother, there is the mother demon behind the scene. So if you don't deal the with the mother, it will be very difficult for, for you to be able to, to deal with the, with the child. Let me use that example for, for the sake of clarity and for the sake of understanding. And so intercession, it, it involves knowing. And sometimes we, we, do, we, do, we do prayers. We, we call them, uh, we call them um, inquiry, prayers of inquiry, inquiry, inquiry of what has been happening. And sometimes you find that uh, God can backdate you and, and you see it, it was an opening even 300 years ago or 500 years ago. And God takes you to that place where that door was open so that as you begin your intercession, you are doing it with the knowledge, you are doing it with the insight, you have a clear understanding. And of course, identifying with the praise because also intercession is identifying. It's, it's doing, it's at times intercession we do identification of repentance, you are able to identify with the area very much. And so you become very effective. And, uh, you know, we, we take responsibility from a point of knowing, you know, you can, it's not very easy for you to take responsibility if you don't know what you're taking responsibility and what you're supposed to do. So sometimes it becomes very difficult if you don't know, but that knowing that time, uh, that state of knowing, it helps you to identify, it, take, it helps you to take, uh, uh, to take responsibility. You are able to identify with the sin of that community. You are able to identify with the sin of that, uh, of that family. You are able to identify even with the sin. It can be even uh, in a church center. You see the Bible says in the book of Lamentations that our father sinned, Lamentation 5.7, our father sinned and they are no more, but we bore their iniquities. So you are able to identify what are the, what are the sins of our fathers, our forefathers, what did they do? In, in a good case, you find it Nehemiah is, is, is identified himself with the sins of their forefathers. Daniel the same, because they, they, could, they understood, you know, the, the, the way their forefathers walked before God. It was not in the way that God really desired. And they are seen as actually opened a door, you know, opened a door for attack. Yesterday we saw the reason as to why the beasts of the field, they devour. It is because they, they, they lack somebody to stand at the gap. And so um, intercessors also create an, almost, uh, an, an at atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to move and to complete his task using the church. So the, this knowing, this kind of knowing, it, it creates, it helps to create an environment of the working of the Holy Spirit. How, how, how does it work? You know, the Bible says that um, the Holy Spirit searches the mind of God. He knows what is the will of God. You know, uh, John, the Bible says that he takes what is of the Father and he revealed it, he reveals this unto us. So it creates an, an atmosphere of the Holy Spirit to be to able to move. And sometimes you find that time uh, when you begin to maybe to intercede for a city, to intercede for your for your family. Sometimes it requires a lot of patience because there are things, there are heavy things that you're going to deal with, and you cannot do with them. Hallelujah, you know, we are living in a generation whereby we, we are we, we have been acquitted with the with instant things, instant tea, instant coffee, instant everything. It, it does not happen that, like that in the kingdom of God. There's no instant things. There is that persistence, there is that uh, there is that build up of capacity, 
because even you yourself, when you enter into that dimension, God will also continue building your capacity, enlarging your heart so that you can really be able, because actually intercession is feeling the heart of God. It is feeling the heart of God. You know the heart of God. And sometimes the Holy Spirit puts, puts the burden. He takes the burden that is in the heart of God. And sometimes you can go into a particular city or a particular church or a particular place, and you find that there is grieving. There is grieving. You have started grieving because of the city. You don't know actually what is happening. You don't know the, 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 the setup, the, the spiritual atmosphere, but you find that you begin to grieve. You begin to grieve. And even sometimes to a point you cry and you cry because God is giving you the burden that he has. He is what he is seeing. What is what has abandoned his heart? The sins of the people that has uh, has has, um, uh, has has been very grievous in his eyes, and you begin to take the burden of God. And sometimes we, we need a lot of sensitivity because God will take you to such places, and and you so you you begin to feel that you you are getting a burden. Sometimes we we take it for granted, but this is an indication that God is moving you. God is giving you. The burden for that city. God is giving you the burden for that family. God is giving you the burden for that uh, for, for for that individual person. And so, when you 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 undertake and you you position yourself, you create an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to move in that particular situation because it is not uh, about us; it is about God. Let us tackle the subject of. Um, of challenges and reason whereby, why don't we have intercessors? Why? What are the challenges? What are the reasons? Because if we don't understand the, the, the challenges, we know yesterday we had that, um, that we, we, from the scriptures that God, he told uh, Ezekiel that I'm looking for a man. Why are these men, why are they not found? And I've spoken to a number of ministers here in Kenya, and some others in Tanzania, Brudy. And we, we know when we, we are speaking about how, how is the attendance of prayer meetings in their area. And every pastor or every minister of the gospel is almost complaining because the, the prayer meetings are the least attended. One of the things that could be contributed to that it is maybe because people don't believe in the power of prayer. They don't believe in the power of prayer. Uh, I tend to think it is because they don't believe in the power of prayer. They don't value prayer. And that's why sometimes you find that they don't commit themselves to that level. They don't commit themselves to that level. There is a lot of slackness. But for the people who are going to make impact and actually usher in the revival that God desires to, to, to release in the end time. There are people who have a clear understanding of what intercessory is all about and their responsibility uh, as concerns intercession and also the willingness, the soberness, the willingness, the soberness of taking the weapons of prayer and fighting the, the, the battles of God. So if we don't know the reason as to why we have scarcity of intercessors, we, we cannot be very, very effective because we are because we are the people who understand. We need to stand on the gap. First of all, we pray that uh, God to release more intercessors, because the more intercessors we have, the lesser the burden becomes. You know, the Bible says that one chases a thousand, two chase tens of thousand. And when you think about that spiritual projection, if you are eight of you, if you are 10 of you, if you are 20 of you, uh, the magnitude of the work that is going to be done for the sake of the kingdom. Now, the reason as to why there is a big challenge and reasons for shortage of intercessors, it is because 
intercession or intercessory demands a high level of holiness. Why? Because intercessor stands before the presence of God. They stand before the presence of God. And of course, we know God is holy. God is holy, and he cannot lower his standard. You know, uh, he, told, uh, he told the house of Eri, to them that are holy, I will reveal myself holy. I will receive myself, I will reveal myself a holy God. Many people or people in the church, believers, they are not able to live to that uh, standard of holiness that God demands. Of course, we, are, we know we are people, we are, we are in this life, and, and sometimes there are shortcomings here and there. And God understands this, but there is a level that we move with God. That is why we spoke about, we spoke about repentance. And we say we don't do it in a religious manner. We don't do it as a religion. It is because we want to maintain our walk with God, the flow of the presence of God, our connection, that we are partnering with him. You cannot partner with somebody that you are not going together. Two cannot work together until they agree. So uh, many believers, the standard of holiness, holiness, intercessors must stand in the presence of God like Abraham did. This is in the book of Genesis 18, right? And you're going to read for yourself, 18, 17 to, to, to 23. Believers who ought to intercede cannot stand in the presence of God because of their sins that are not acknowledged, confessed, and forsaken. Let me repeat again. The reason as to why they cannot stand in the presence of God is because of their sin that are not acknowledged, confessed, and forsaken. And so when you are taking the initiative, the burden of a city, you need to check yourself what is the standard? What is the standard of righteousness of holiness are you setting for yourself? Is there any sin? That is in your life. There are those people. Uh, there are those sins that people call secret sins, and when it comes to secret things, and uh, see sins, there is no secret sin before the presence of God or before God. The Bible says we all lie naked before His presence. He knows. He knows everything in our lives, and, and that's why we we need to acknowledge or, or always we acknowledge our sins. You know, we are, not, we are not there. We don't measure to his standard. And you know, he is the only one. You know, God is the one that qualifies us. But there is that yieldedness that we need to have to him. There is that willingness. The Bible says the willing and the obedient. The will and the obedient. There is that concept of your willingness that I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing uh, to, to, to forsake this kind of a sin. I'm willing to come of it. And because you don't have the power, you yourself, to do it, then God intervenes because there is that willingness. We remember this woman that was called Mary Magdalene. You know the kind of life that she was living. And also the Samaritan woman, the kind of life that we are living. And I always, I, I, always, I, always, I always see the, the diversion of purpose in these two women because you see, in the case of the Samaritan woman, he was the one, the, the, the revival, the revival that, was, that was, was, was to hit the city of Somalia was locked in this woman. But the, uh, the destiny of this woman was hijacked by the enemy. It was diverted to other things. In fact, sometimes I make fun. Uh, 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 it's not fun, but I try to elaborate that. And I, I always tell people when I'm preaching, especially in a crusade, that he had the grace, uh, he had the anointing, of course, from the enemy of, of, of doing zero grazing, men, men, doing men zero grazing, you know, because he had that potential. She carried the, 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 the potential revival, but there was a diversion. But now when, when there was that genuine repentance, when that, there was that genuine acknowledgement of our sin, there was a transformation and the deposit that God had deposited ever since the foundations of the world was it, it, it sprouted forth. 
and he went to the city of Samaria, Samaria, and he was telling people, come and see a man, come and see her. And there was a total revolution. There was a breakup of revival because of somebody who had acknowledged their sins. And, and there was a move of God in that city. And the reason that's why I mentioned this, it is to, to make us, uh, it is to have as our eyes open so that we can be able, especially this time, we are laying the foundation because of the year, because we need more intercessors. Uh, like now, God has positioned you in, in Canada. We need a lot of intercessors who can be able to intercede and actually be able to deal with the demonic covering, with the demonic canopy that has covered uh, the, 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 <clears throat> the continent of Canada so that actually there is the release of the people, there is the release of, uh, of, of salvation, deliverance, and their eyes can be opened. You know, the Bible says that the, 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 the God of this world that the, uh, has unbridled the unbelievers. They cannot see, they cannot see even the light of the gospel, the light of the gospel. And that's why we need to, to exercise a very high level of holiness, we need to exercise a lot of a lot of soberness and and, and a be focused and a be focused. Of course, there, there is a, there is there is a cost. There is a sacrifice that goes along with that. But when there is this kind of position, a positioning, you find that uh, grace begins to, to 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 flow. Let me point out the purity of heart and the cleanness of hands, as we have. But for us, as we find it in the book of uh, Psalms 24, 3 to 4, you find that uh, they, are, they, they are very key, the purity of heart, the, the purity of heart. You know, the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall, for they shall see God. The, you know, purity of heart means you don't hide anything in your heart. When I'm teaching the word of God sometimes in the church, I always, always tell people, try, be, be sincere to God. If a good example, you are offended, just go before the presence of God and tell God, I'll be offended by so and so. Tell God, I am bitter because of this. And this. you are being sincere. You are being, you are being open to God. You are not working. You are not working in, in, in self-denial, you know. And in that self-denial, you know, you cannot be, really be able to penetrate in the presence of God. It always becomes a hindrance. Maybe you have, called, you have gone through process of things that have made you maybe, maybe bitter. You have gone through, uh, through, through, hard, through, through hard times. You have gone through, through things that have been really challenging. And you know, sometimes even when we go through those challenges, they have a negative, a negative impact in, in, in your life. I was telling people some time ago, I was telling them, you cannot go to the shop and buy rats and rats, you know, rats and rats, that, that poison that kills the rats. You know, you don't, cannot go to the shop of the chemist and buy rats and rats and take it and expect that the rats are the ones to die. You are the one to die. So <laughs> the one that has taken, uh, I always use that example. To say that if you walk in bitterness, if you humble by bitterness, you know, you know, it's like taking large rats and expect the rats are the ones to die. In the due process, is going to it is going to mess up your life. You know, things like this depression, they're not supposed to be had in the in the house of God. For the Bible says, do not do not be anxious of anything. I know challenges, challenges you can't. But there is a way we release ourselves. There is a, a way we release ourselves before before God. And you don't let anything in your heart. Don't don't keep anything in your heart. The Bible says, above all, guard your heart with all diligence, from from because it is from your heart that flows the issues of life. What are the issues of life? The issues of life. It is it is the grace of God upon your life that navigates your life, that it upholds your life. It is the presence of God in your life that upholds your life and, 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 and makes you relevant, relevant in every situation. So purity and cleanness of hands and humility, humility, holiness, and righteousness 
are required for those who with, with, with a seed. And you'll find that uh, uh, in the body of Christ, there is a lot of mixture. There is a lot of mixture. And brethren, you cannot be an effective intercessor if there is a mixture. I was trying to explain some times back uh, to, to uh, some people was preaching to some other time and I was telling them, you know, you know nowadays, you know, if you check the book of Genesis, you find that uh, God was saying, and every tree shall produce after its own kind. But now today there is a lot of mixture. We have like apple mangoes. It is a mixture of an apple and a mango. And if you put, if you have uh, one mango that is, that is not, does not have a mixture, it's, it's, it's original and you get an apple mango and you put them together for a duration of time, you find that uh, the apple mango begins to decay faster simply because of, of the mixture. Maybe that one is for another time. God makes, we cannot be able to um, be effective intercessors when there is a mixture, when there is a mixture because the Bible says, and this is very key to understand, that the devil is the accuser of brethren. You remember he accused Joshua. He went and stood before the presence of God and he was accusing Joshua that he has won few the rocks. It's until God rebukes him and tells him, don't you know this is a fire blank that has been plucked of the fire. He is always taking accusation before our father. So we should ensure that there is no, there is no in a discrepancy in our heart. And many people are not willing to do that. They, they want to, they want to be, uh, they want like, there's, uh, there is uh, an example that uh, in, in, our, in, in our language, we, we are saying about a double, a double-minded person. And he is like a hyena who, who has a desire for this and that is all. So he puts his leg on both sides. And at the end of the day, uh, there was a saying that we were saying that he will be split into two. You know, people want their one hand, their one leg to be in the church and also to be in their things that actually they don't abide within the word of God. The word of God is our mirror. The word of God is, you know, we can take a good example that when you go and buy a certain gadget in a factory, it is packaged well. But inside it, there is an operational money. The operational money, it is to help you so that you can be able to learn how that particular gadget is operated. You cannot begin operating that gadget without knowing what to do. Uh, how do you do the power, the pragging of the power? I love the word pragging in power. In intercessory, we prag into power to become effective. So, brethren, what we need, this is very key, we need to understand. So that, because we are the people now, we saw yesterday we have found grace before God, before the presence of God. We can be able to stand in the gap and pray God for more intercessors so that our burden becomes righter and, and, and there is illumination in the city. People are set free because we are the one that is carrying the burden of God in every situation in that city that God has positioned you. You are not in that city for just being there. No, you're not in that city for your own self. You are there as an ambassador of Christ. You are presenting the kingdom of God there because you do it. You know, my prayer is that God, you begin to open your spiritual understanding, your spiritual eyes, and you see the need for intercessors so that the burden becomes, and especially to, 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 to the peoples that are, uh, are of the faith, the, 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 the believers, you know, there, there needs to be this, there is, needs to be this uh, uh, awakening. There needs to be this, uh, the, 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 this uh, fear of God, the restoration of the fear of God, the holiness of God, that we cannot do anything that we know that the grieves the Holy Spirit. You know, I was checking mm -hmm. another time, that word used there in the Ephesians that do not cleave the Holy Spirit. Uh, the, 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 it is derived from the Greek word ropa, which means uh, causing, it's the same word as is used as when you do a physical harm, like maybe using a blunt object or that, or something of that kind. And so, you know, without grieving the Holy Spirit, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit is grieving over the church. 
because of the sin yeah, of, the, of, of, the, of the sinful state of, of the church. And that's why we have a challenge uh, and of, uh, of, uh, of and so shortage of intercessor. And because God is opening your eye right now, in that level of shielding, I know God is opening your eyes and uh, the eyes uh, we can be able to see in your city, you can be able to see in your family, you can be able to see even in your own church the things that, that really needs to be done. And I know with this understanding, God is going to release a, a special grace in, in our days because I know now God is, is, is counting you as a remnant. God is counting you as a remnant. That is why we are having this kind of experience because we are remnants. And always I've, I've checked the Bible and I, I've seen that uh, God always, in every move, in every revival, even the one we study, the Azusa Street, we know it, it, it's just a remnant of people who took the burden to pray, who took the burden to pray, who took the burden to intercede. And I know after we have gone through the 21 days of prayer and fasting, will God will have activated us or given us more burden. We you know the eyes, our eyes have been opened and we can be able to see the, the, the need of intercessors and we are going to identify with the situations and circumstances and do identification repentance so that we can open the door for grace, the doors for mercy, so that uh, there is that spiritual enlightenment and the glory of God descends and people are, are, are set free. People are set free with the glory of God. Another thing that is that that makes uh, that is a challenge and a reason for shortage of intercessors. It is because many people are fear are in fear of attack. They are in fear of attack. According to Ephesians chapter six, verse thirteen to twenty, you know intercessors must stand against Satan, besides standing before God to destroy and to bring uh, and to bring uh, no effect against certain plans, accusation and attacks. Satan has no part, has no part uh, on his part, vents his whole love on the intercessor. When you begin, uh, I was speaking to somebody else some, sometimes he, uh, and we were selling and he told me, he, he, he had gone in a certain for certain days of prayer and fasting. And the attack was so fierce. The attack was so fierce. So simply because, you know, you are fighting the devil. And don't, don't think that time. Uh, don't imagine that you are fighting the devil and he's crossing his arms looking on you. That you are attacking. No. He, he, also, he also has he, uh, released his own arsenal. But that's why we need to have a lot of persistence. We need to have a lot of boldness and the fear is not of God. When fear comes, there is that intimidation. People fear what you were when they, you know, when, when I was, I was talking to, I had somebody say, say something that were, that uh, I really didn't, or I was not really up. And he was saying, uh, devil, what, 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 you know, he was saying, you know, and they did not understand. I'm sorry for that cricket. Uh, you know, because we, we need to understand that when we begin intercessory, it is we are attacking the forces of darkness and the fear of attack, the fear of attack, sometimes it makes many people to withdraw. And that's why when you know that you are beginning the process of interceding for your family, uh, for your city, you need to have what we call spiritual covering. You need to have a spiritual covering, a spiritual authority that is that is covering that is covering your life, and it's it's like an umbrella. And maybe the, this one is something that we're going to run some other time because many believers they really don't understand spiritual spiritual covering. They don't understand spiritual covering. You know, there is no way you you, you Paul is telling the Corinthian church at that time that um, I begot you in the gospel. So he was telling them, I, you have honor of one father. The tutors can be many, teachers can be many, but you need to have only one father. 
you don't have two fathers even even in even in the no in the, even you have only one biological father you don't have two so even in the kingdom of god you can only have one spiritual father one spiritual authority speaking over your life and for that uh, spiritual authority to operate in your life it is a walk it is a relationship it is about honoring the grace upon that man of god or upon that woman of god so that that honor there will be always a covering you know there is there will always be a covenant a spiritual covering you know you find many people they move from church to church they don't know who their father is and and this is this is wrong this is not supposed to be this is not what's supposed to be in the, in, the, in the kingdom of god and you find that that's why some some people there is a lot they cannot be able to wage war in the heavens they cannot be able to do effective intercessory because they don't have a spiritual covering you cannot have to you have to submit to one even jesus was submitted to one paul was submitted to one you know you cannot have to and you have and this kind of a person you are only given to you by god if you do not choose your biological father you cannot choose who your spiritual father or your or whoever do, does a spiritual covering in your life you cannot choose choose it for yourself god connects you to that person in his own way if there is a way that god connects you you know and there is a way you you feel in your heart when you meet this kind of a person there is peace and joy in your heart the bible says that peace and joy in the holy ghost this is the kingdom of god i'm saying that the reason as to why we don't have intercessors that is a challenge there is fear fear of attack and the fear comes simply because there is an open we should always have a spiritual covering a spiritual authority that is speaking into your life and that's person that you choose, that God has connected you to be your spiritual authority he speaks into your life he watches over your back he can call you rebuke you correct you and train you in 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 the word of god because god has mandated it and you find that you always walk under 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 under, under that cover you always find you do. I, i i do sometimes i, I have an, a testimony because the, 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 the most of my spiritual sons whenever they are, are going something i have one in dubai whenever they are going something something strange i always know i always know and i don't have to tell you i don't have to tell them you know i just enter into prayer i pray for them and i and i release, and, and 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 things begin better maybe i call them later because it is a principle brethren it is a principle if you do desire to walk this kind of work and be effective and actually you're doing intercessory without fear that there will be retaliations there will be uh, you know the, the retaliations that are coming back to you i tell you you need to it is a spiritual principle that we really need to honor and we really need to abide ourselves in so that we can be able to 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 do effective intercession and many people brethren there is always this problem many people don't want to submit themselves because having a spiritual authority is also about submission you need to submit if that spiritual father tells you don't go don't do you cannot you cannot because of what maybe he is not or your she is not right or is but there is that level of submission so that you submit first and then you know the reasons after i know we are praying together another thing that uh, brings a challenge in the shortage of intercessors maybe are aware from there others we shall check on is that it is because of sin 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 the intercessor must deal with sins in his life your personal life your personal life the way you walk your lifestyle many people don't understand that that body god has given unto you is the temple 
of the Holy Spirit. There is a way you can live, you can, you can, uh, you can live and actually cause a defilement in your, in your life. They become sin. The way you eat, the way you eat, you know, God hates gratitude. If you, you know, the way you eat, even sometimes, you know, you know, people are so careless. They, they are so careless. How do you take your body? How you nourish your body? How you feed your body? That's, those things can be a, a great hindrance uh, in, in effective uh, intercessory and it becomes sin in life. So I say that intercessors must deal with their sins in life. Those hidden things, those hidden things, those you, you say that this is, this, is, this is for me. It's nothing like that. God knows everything in your life. Uh, and he must build up that which is broken in his own life first before he can intercede for others. And that's why, brethren, we need to understand our foundations. It is key we understand our foundation. Where are we coming from? And there are types of foundations. There are, there are family foundations. There is spiritual foundations. There is, uh, there is also, uh, marriage also is a, is, is a foundation. And you need to check yourself. Is there anything that is broken that you need to mend if, so that you can be able to do, so you cannot be able to do effective intercessory? You know, it will be very difficult if you uh, intercede for family, maybe the family life is, is not right. We need to deal with it. We need to, we need to, to build up the broken, the, the broken, the broken praises in our lives so that we can be effective when, when we stand before God and actually be effective. Uh, we need to have, we, we need to have a preparedness of dealing with those things in our lives and prepare our heart. There is a mystery of preparation. Bible says that, uh, that, um, that the preparation of heart, Proverbs 16, 1, that the preparation of heart belongs to a man, but the answer of his tongue is from the Lord. You know, it's, 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 it's your responsibility to prepare your heart before God. You know, it is that time of, of, of self-reflection that time whereby you're able to bring up your broken pieces together. When I was working, I always say I had an opportunity, the privilege of, of working as, as a chef. And one of the things that he used to tell us is, is they use a word called the missing plus, putting the missing in place. It is the work done before the actual work is done. Work done before the actual work is done preparation. Before you intercede, you, there is that work that needs to be done, working on yourself, building up the broken pieces, building them together so that as you stand to intercede for others, for your nation, for your family, you will be effective and, 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 and God will be glorified because the will of God is for us to be able to be effective. And this one you can read in the book of Ezekiel chapter number 14, 105. Today I've not read scriptures because I felt that uh, there is a lot that we need to cover. And I know because you are disciplined people, you always go and read and, and, uh, and digest what you have gone through. I know you'll be able to read uh, in, in your own, 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 own time. Uh, there is, let me tackle something uh, for a few minutes. There is also what we call fatigue in the battle. Many people withdraw. There is fatigue in battle. Uh, intercessors must be prepared for sustained battles. This, this will cost them everything, but they press on without relenting as they focus on the Lord and the battle that must be won. I say this, it will be wisdom. If you know you're not going to complete the process of intercession, don't begin. Because if you do it halfway, it will actually open more doors for attack. You know, that's why I'm speaking about fatigue in battle. 
And there has to be a preparedness in your heart. And that's why uh, it, it is uh, from where we have come from. You, 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 when you are, you are doing identification, you're able to see the weight of the matter, the weight of the matter. And when you take the weight of the matter, if, 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 the, if the, 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 the issue you are praying for, if the city you are praying for, there is so much that needs to be done. You take it with the weight or it is out. So there is a preparedness in your heart as you begin. Of course, there are shortcomings that will come. There are challenges that will come. And so you cannot withdraw. You cannot withdraw. The Bible says that men always ought to pray and never to faint. You know, pray without ceasing. So it's something that you are going to push it into the world because some deliverance in some cases it will take time but it will take a build up of of intercessory over time and that's why we should avoid the the, the, the fatigue in 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 the battle the reason as to why we studied this today is so that there is a preparedness in our heart that we can be we, that we can encounter the same thing and so when they come we will know how to conduct ourselves. Intercessors need also, also to be persistent. You know, many people, they start and, uh, and, and, and they don't continue. Yesterday I was preaching to some people and I was telling them, if we are going to realize the blessings of God in this year, there has to be a momentum of prayer. There has to be a momentum of intercession. Many people get, you know, they get tired, they get weary, they, you know, they, they, they get bored. Some, sometimes maybe uh, when they pray, they don't see answers, you know, because of their expectations. And that there's no that persistence. They don't maintain the momentum. And so, you know, it is what circuit is the process that God had started. And so by God's grace, I know as we stand at the gap and pray for the men, for boys that says us, I know we are going to deal with those things that we have tackled today, especially so that we can really be effective and have more intercessors that are going to take the burden with us. And even as we move on, uh, praying for our families, praying for our city, praying for our governments, praying for, for, for learning institutions that will be able to take it with the weight it deserves. But for now, let me proceed from there. We shall be continuing and building on the same. I believe we shall, um, sometimes next week we can do, we can be able to do spiritual warfare, what is all about what is spiritual warfare, what is required of us. And I know that, um, that, that God is going to continue building us up and enlighten us so that we can be able actually to stand for the purposes of God to the will of God. Maybe we can have five minutes, we pray for ourselves, this grace, the grace to intercede, the grace uh, of prayer, Bible says that God will, will pour the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We can call for more intercessors so we could be able to take the body, the body together with us. Let us go before the Lord and tell God to help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we come before your holy presence this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, God, for exposing this kind Thank you for your work here in Thank you for We appreciate you Thank you, 
we shall prevail in the name Amen. My prayer for you is that God will give you sufficient grace mm-hmm. to, to the weight of the matter in the city that God has sent you to, to send you to preach the gospel. Mm-hmm. God, Amen. Level, but, and the grace of intercessory. May God raise the spirit of grace and supplication. May God raise you to that level that you can be able to combat the forces of darkness be able to operate in the realms of the spirit so that you can be able to usher in revival as God has desired. So God bless you so much for that time. I'm really privileged to and honored.